Hey guys, how's it going? So, Jeff Holiday here, and I promised you guys a while ago that I was going to teach you how to use OBS, and hopefully by using OBS, you can improve the quality of some of the streams that you're doing, um, and, you know, do something more fancy. And so, here we go. Now, I'm going to start off assuming, uh, as I'm looking at all these beautiful people that I got to meet at VidCon, I'm going to assume that by now you know how to go and find OBS Studio, you can install it, all that kind of shit. Now, when it pops up, it's going to look something similar to this. Now, let's make this nice and big. It took me a while to get around to doing this because I was trying to figure out which one I wanted to use as a screen capture, because usually I use OBS, but you can't use OBS to catch itself. So, there you go. So first of all, you're going to have your basic OBS window. And what you're going to want to do is get your stream key from YouTube so that you can make the whole thing work. And it's actually very, very simple. Over here, I've got a secondary uh, YouTube account. Uh, it doesn't really have anything on it. Very, very bare bones. But here's what you have when you go to your creator studio. It's the same as anybody else's. And usually, if you're going to be doing basic live streaming, you've probably done some before. You know to go over to the live stream tab. Here you have your settings for stream now and then events. So we're going to create an event. So up here, let's go new live event. OBS tutorial. Don't really need to put anything else in there. Uh, we're going to go to custom. And this is important because Quick is just going to use Google Hangouts on air. Custom gives you more encoding options. So... Advanced settings, nothing you really need, all basic shit. Create event. So next up, it's going to take you to your ingestion settings page. That's what this thing is right here. Here's where you really don't want to fuck with main camera and add a camera. It, it's honestly nothing that you really need to be worried about, especially for the purposes of what we're doing here. I never use add a camera. This is where you can put your thumbnail, and then you get your basic ingestion. Now... I've got a really, really, really good connection. So I can handle doing 3 to 6 kbps in a 1080 stream. So we'll go ahead and select that. Select your encoder. We're going to go to other encoders. And then it's going to give us what is called stream name, which is your stream key. So go ahead and select that, copy it. And we're going to come over here to OBS. Now in OBS, you're going to have basic settings all done up. And in the stream right here, you're going to want to make sure you're selected on YouTube, YouTube Gaming. And then you're going to want to put your stream key right in there. Go ahead and click Apply. Make sure it's in good. Now, other things you want to keep in mind when you're going to be streaming with OBS is there are a lot of different options for how, how to get it working exactly how you want it to be. Um, a lot of them are very complicated, and we don't really have to get into it too much, but I'm going to show you what my settings are. So if we go here to Output, got mine on Advanced. I selected which encoder I want. I usually use the H.264. Uh, again, if this doesn't make any sense, it's totally fine. You can just copy what I'm doing, and you're probably going to be okay. Uh, bitrate 3000. You need to make sure your bitrate is going to be similar to what you selected in your ingestion settings on YouTube. And I'll, I'll show you how that, how that whole thing is working. Uh, keyframe interval is basically, it puts an extra delay, and that can be helpful if, you're, if there's a disconnection between what you're trying to show and what's showing up on streaming. It helps to some people who don't have necessarily really high-end CPUs and that sort of thing. Uh, it just gives a little bit of an extra pause, so you might not drop as many frames. I haven't had a problem with it for anything I've been doing, so I keep it at zero for auto. It basically just fixes itself. And then in video, you get to select your basic canvas resolution, which is this, the space you're going to be working with, and then what it's going to be output as. Now, for my gaming streams, I usually output at 720, but for, say, YouTube Saints... I do 1920 by 1080, which is what I'll be doing tonight, so, okay. So, from here, this is all set up, and what how you would go live is very, very basic. Uh, you would go ahead and go to your live control room here on YouTube. It says, we're not receiving data from your encoder. Make sure it is configured correctly in the ingestion settings page. Okay. Well, it's not getting anything because they're not streaming. So if I go ahead and click Start Streaming here, it 
it's going to start. Let me come over here. Stream status good. Your health is good. 1080p stream. And that will tell you if it's looking good. Now, even though I've clicked start streaming over here on OBS, I'm not broadcasting to the internet yet. For that, I have to go through the final steps to make sure OBS is is going and running and your stream is going to go all the way through. So here in YouTube, you're going to click the preview button. And this is going to take a minute. It, it usually takes a good 30 to 40 seconds or so. And you want to make sure that you have everything previewed probably like a minute or two before you're supposed to go live. That way you're not making people wait. I mean, people are pretty patient, but if you're trying to be as professional and on time as possible, try and get your preview out of the way like a couple minutes before you go live. So we previewed, come down, we're gonna check this. Usually it takes a good 30 to 40, okay. And so we're not actually showing anything right now, but that's totally fine. We're gonna get to that in a second. And then we go ahead and click start streaming. And now it is broadcasting live to the internet. So that's one thing. Now, while we're doing this, and we can even, we'll go ahead and turn the sound off and we'll leave this live so we can come back and look at it while we're building this. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that OBS is, OBS works on layers. It works on layers and it works on scenes. So I have a lot of scenes here that you can see. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and build a new scene just from scratch to see how it's going to look. So, uh, test scene. So test scene, here's my scene right here. And under sources, we have any number of different things that we can add. For instance, we could go and say, we want a window capture. So let's say, for example, we want to get a Firefox window. So if we go Firefox 3, I already have it capturing a few Firefoxes. And once you've added a source, it'll be in here and you can add it as existing. But I'm just going to show you how to do it right at the very beginning. Firefox 3. And you see in the window, it's already selected Firefox, which is pretty handy. But it could get Chrome. It could get Groove Music. I don't even know why Groove Music is open. That's weird. Uh, capture cursor or not. And then, I'm actually going to go ahead and turn that off. And then here we go. We have our Firefox window. And it's the same thing that I have right here. Now, as I'm going to a website, let's say we're going to go to yahoo.com, whoever the fuck goes to Yahoo anymore, but whatever. Uh, and as you can see, it is showing up. Also, if we go back over to the scene, you can see that Firefox is now moving and manipulating. But... Here's the catch. You also can click and drag and manipulate these things to any size that you want. It really, really honestly doesn't matter. As well, these will basically be layered. When you say want to add an image, and we're gonna get a, an image of bearing. All right, bearing is over top of Firefox. Or I could come up here, we have Firefox, bearing in our source. Let's grab bearing, let's hit this down button and now bearing is under. Now this, it, this allows you to do some really, really interesting things with how you're going to have different things showing, uh, how you're gonna have your camera set up. Uh, let's see if I can get a good example. Let's say we're looking at the Saints main screen. The Saints main, or actually the Saints screen with vids. So this right here, you can see there's a lot of stacks to it we have Saints Vids image. And what this is, is actually just a PNG with a hole cut out of it so that I can then take my Firefox window and I can maneuver it around. So if I'm watching a video, I can make sure that it fits specifically inside of that frame. And then usually what ends up happening is my webcam will be up in the corner and then I'll capture the webcam of uh, Nick, Wizard of Cause, and put it there. So that's the basic idea of how the layers work. That's how you get started with OBS. That's how you stack your images. And that's how you can use a little bit of wizardry to make sure everything fits exactly how it needs to be. In the next video, we'll start talking a little bit more about complexities, interesting things that you can do, cropping various different things, and start playing with, like, say, browser source plugins and filters. So check that one out. I'll have that up in probably a few days. Um, and I hope everyone else is well. We'll see each other again soon. Bye.